morning once again. Our recollection master is well known to all of us in TLD. In fact, he attended a marriage encounter weekend and took the LSS in our community. He has been invited to be our guest reflectionist in one of our corporate worships and was a guest speaker at our recent Pentecost activity. Presently, he is the parish priest of Saints Peter and Paul in Poblacion, Makati, and a professor of moral theology among his many other positions and responsibilities. Two days ago, he celebrated his 38th sacerdotal anniversary, and we are very blessed to have him with us today. Let us give a warm welcome to Reverend Monsi Jerry Santos. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We're going to have three hours of being together. I'd like to ma maximize. Uh, at 12 noon, I have you leave because I will preside at the Holy Hour and uh, Saturday Mass at the Pink Sisters in Tagaytay. In our experience, in my experience as a priest, we face so many challenges today from a charismatic covenant community like BLD to a contemplative community like the Pink Sisters. It only shows the variety and the wealth of the Catholic Church. We see the strength of our lay people with you we also see the power of the contemplative life with the Pink Sisters. I'd like you to see that length and breadth and to see beyond BLD. I owe a lot to BLD when I was parish priest in St. James in Ayala, Alabama. It was Rene and Gink Kiros some of you remember them, who invited me to have an LSS with a dead father, Adorable, at the AFP Theater. It was a worthwhile experience. It was then Attorney Art and Lenny Panganiban who brought me to Mirador, and receive the Holy Spirit through the marriage encounter weekend. It was that that enabled St. James the Great to be a fruitful community. I don't want to use the word success. I want to use the word fruitful. And take note, I choose the words properly for you to understand where you are being drawn by the Holy Spirit. It is because of the renewal movement that we owe a lot to the Lord for strengthening that community in Ayala, Alabang and still is very active today. I owe it to the St. James renewal movement that the Church of St. James was built because up to now, I am convinced that the renewal movement is the backbone of that parish. I was there for nine years and how actively involved these renewed Catholics became because of that experience of that marriage encounter to LSS, to FE. And then we went to CPPJ, Christian Parenting for Peace and Justice, and then the Parish Renewal Experience. Please take note, a trajectory. A trajectory of renewal. The starting point is LSS. Or Marriage Encounter, and then LSS. Either or, valid. But that is what we call renewal. Making lives new again in the Lord 
in the service of the church. Please take note, that statement is very important. I am renewed in the Lord to be in greater service to church and country. Prodeo et patria. So that renewal cannot be just be within the halls of BLD or else it dies. It must bear fruit in the world. For that is the mission proper to lay people like you. To transform family, transform politics, transform culture, transform digital technology, transform economy, transform the world. Your vineyard is bigger than mine, larger than mine. And I still consider lay people like you as a sleeping giant. Reason is because precisely the renewal that you have received years back has not really made a dent to transform society as a whole. And that is the grace I desire for you in this session. I will be talking for one hour and a half. We'll have a break. After that, we'll have Saturday Mass. And the Mass will be in honor of St. Therese of the Child Jesus. It is her feast day today. Actually, she died September 30, 1897, if I'm not mistaken, 19th century. She died at the age of 24. And she is the youngest doctor of the church and one of the four women doctors of the church. There are at present only 38 doctors of the church and the four women doctors are Teresa of Avila, Catherine of Siena, Hildegard of Bingen, and Teresa of the Child Jesus. But she is the youngest, age 24 years old. And unlike the other doctors of the church, she only wrote one masterpiece which is the story of a soul, which I would gladly present to you as a spiritual reading. It's a beautiful mastery of spiritual life. That is why she is known as the doctor of mystical love. I'd like you to, to bring all of these graces together and I ask myself, tinamaan ang shepherding, renewal, so October 1, number 2, it's the first Saturday. At number 3, one of the first assemblies face-to-face -face of BLT. Take it as grace. Because I do feel, being part of renewal, nothing in this world happens by accident. God must have a plan for each of you. For you to be an instrument of His renewal for others. And to be truly under shepherds, not shepherds, under shepherds, because there is only one shepherd. And the shepherd is Jesus of Nazareth. With that, I'd like to begin with the prayer. And the prayer is the prayer of synodality. There. It was uh, written for the Synod of Bishops on Synodality, and it is a beautiful prayer. Just remain seated while it speaks of standing before the Holy Spirit. We ask the Holy Spirit to hover over us, to strengthen us, to inspire us, to draw us near to God. Because it is only by the Holy Spirit that we can call God Abba Father. We cannot pray by ourselves. It is the Spirit that draws us to prayer because prayer is fundamentally a gift of God. And that is one of the truths that I would like to share with you. We cannot pray by ourselves. We can only pray in the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit that draws us to prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, together we stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather in your name. With you alone to guide us, Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path. 
nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we have in the communion of the Father and the Son forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Animation ko kayo, ha? Eh? Animation ko kayo. Okay. All the men, kayo ay ako'y buhay, hindi patay. Ang mga kababaihan ay, okay, again, ha? Ako'y buhay, mga kalalakihan. Ang mga kababaihan ay hindi patay. Tapos lahat, kaman lalakbay. Tapos ay, uy. Okay? Ganun na. Pero gagawin yon lalaki, tatayo, ako'y buhay, hindi patay, kaman lalakbay, uy. Okay? Tingnan natin ang mga tuhod nyo. Ano? Baba nyo na muna mga notebooks nyo. Okay? Sige, ah, gagawin natin, ha? At mga notebooks, mga bag nyo. Okay? Tatayo ang mga kalalakihan. Dahan-dahan lang. Ako'y buhay. Okay, buhay. Kalalakihan natin. Ako'y buhay. Opo. Mga kababaihan, hindi patay. Okay, tatay yung mga lalaki at saka mga babae. Kaman lalaki, tapos, uy! Okay, o, sige. Opo, ready ha? Tinatandahan ko, maraming mga senior dito. Mga kaperks ko eh. Ready, set. Ako'y buhay, hindi patay. Kaman lalaki, ako'y buhay. Ay, hindi patay ka man lalakbay. Ako'y buhay, hindi patay. Ako'y buhay, hindi patay. Ako'y buhay, hindi patay ka man lalakbay. Okay, bilisan natin. Ang mga kasinior cities ay goto yung mga ito eh. Okay, again, ha? Kuya, masusundan mo, di ba? Ako'y buhay. Teka, sa nalit. Excited. Okay, sige. Ready, set. Ako'y buhay, hindi patay ka man lalakbay. Ako'y buhay, hindi patay ka man lalakbay. Ako'y buhay, hindi patay. Ako'y buhay, hindi patay. Ako'y buhay, hindi patay. Kaman lalakbay. O, bilisan natin. PNT, ha? Ready, ha? Ready? Sige, para mabuhay ang mga tuhod. Ready, set, go! Ako'y buhay, hindi patay. Kaman lalakbay. Ako'y buhay, hindi patay. Kaman lalakbay. Ako'y buhay, hindi patay. Ako'y buhay, hindi patay. Ako'y buhay, hindi patay. Kaman lalakbay. Very good! Talaga, hindi naman wala. May pagkain na agad, oh. Yeah. Hanggang takalihan yata dito, di ba? Let's begin. Let's begin with church history. Just for you to have bearings on where renewal is. In 1959, Pope Pius XII died. He was the Pope of the Second World War. The church was strong. It had many vocations. It was a fortress. In 1959, the Pope who replaced him was John the XXIII. And John the XXIII in 1959 started the world. 
Why? Because he called for the Second Vatican Council. And according to him, there are two objectives of Vatican II, namely, keeping the church up to date, which is renewal, and relationship with other Christians who are not Catholics. The word was, in Italian, aggiornamento. The root word is giorno, which is day. Keeping the church up to date. Of course, the whole world, the College of Cardinals, the bishops were so startled that this old pope of 80 years old would call for Vatican II. But since he was pope, everybody obeyed him. So in 1962, Vatican II was convened with these two objectives, renewal and ecumenism. To renew the church, to make the church new again, to experience a new Pentecost. That is as far as 1959, this Pope was prophetic. In other words, he was moving the church towards the 20th century, yet that was 1960. It was the middle of the 20th century, entering into the 21st century. But in 1963, Pope John XXIII died. And the Pope who replaced him was Paul VI. And Paul VI said, there are four objectives of the Council. And the four objectives of the Council are, number one, that the Church may have a thorough understanding of her nature. Who are you, Church? As far back as then, there was a sense of visioning. What kind of Church are you? Who are you, Church? What does it mean to be Catholic? What does it mean to be a member of the Catholic Church? By the way, we were the largest religion in the world. And the largest religions in the world are, number one is uh, Christianity, and number two, Islam. But please take note, these are both Abrahamistic religions. They come from one father, who is Abraham. And remember, there are three world religions that came from Abraham. What are the three major religions? Number one was Judaism. Remember? From Abraham came Isaac. From Isaac came Jacob. And Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Right? And from Israel came the twelve tribes. And from the twelve tribes came Judah. And from Judah came Jesus of Nazareth. Because from Judah came David. Go back to church and biblical history. In other words, three major religions. Up to now, we are still the biggest, this Abrahamistic religion. Kaya tunay na sinasabi, you will be father of nations. Abraham is our common father in faith. He is the father of humanity. So identity, the question is now, who are you, Catholic Church? You are the oldest in the unbroken line of Christianity. Why? Because our link with Jesus Christ is through Simon Peter. Because it is Jesus who said to Simon Peter, You are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church. Unbroken. All the successors of Peter help us to link ourselves to Jesus of Nazareth. That is our link. That is why the visible head of the church is the successor of Peter, known as the Bishop of Rome, who enjoys primacy over all the bishops. I'd like you to remember that. Why? Because you relish your being Catholic by that sense. But you also build common ground with other Christians because of our common faith. Common faith in what? What makes us common with other Christians? Two things. Number one, is that we believe in the Trinity. 
That makes us Christian. And the way we were baptized is through the Trinitarian formula. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Kapag ganun ang pagbibinyag sa iyo, balin ang binyag mo. Which means we share one common faith with the Greek Orthodox Church of the East and the Protestants on the West. Kaya kapag may magpapa, sabi, mag, gusto kong maging katoliko, tatanungin ko, ano hong kristyano kayo? Methodist po. Okay, you want to be Catholic? Yes, alright. You will undergo katikendal instruction. Pero, ang mangyayari, hindi ka nabibinyagan. You will just make an off profession of faith because your baptism is valid. Isa yun sa pag-uusapan ninyo. Baka may pumasok sa mga LSS na sabihin eh, Ako ho ay Christian, pero hindi Catholic. Pero ang Iglesia ni Cristo, hindi Kristiyano. Kasi hindi sila naniniwala na si Jesus ay Diyos na totoo. Which means, ang pamamaraan ng binyag ng Iglesia ay binibinyag ang kita sa ngalan ni Jesus. Yun lang. They don't believe that Jesus is through God. He's only a human being. That's one of the major doctrines of the Iglesia ni Cristo. Alam niyo, nagbigay ako ng recollections sa isang Catholic school, hindi ko nababanggitin. Nung sinabi ko ito, isa sa kanila, lumapit sa akin, mo senior, may nag nagagalit sa inyong teacher. Sabi ko, bakit? Eh, ito yung apat na teachers na ito eh, Iglesia. Ang sabi ko sa principal, eh bakit pa kayo tumatanggap ng iglesia? <laughs> Unang-una, kapag Catholic school kayo, huwag kayo tatanggap ng hindi katolikong teacher. Lilituhin niya ng mga, mga estudyante. Nakita mo, silang apat, lito. Nag-ex nyo? Kasi hindi, sila, hindi nila tinuturuan ng tamang doktrina ng iglesia. Naniniwala sila na si Jesus ay Diyos na totoo. Ibig sabihin, hindi malinaw ang catechetical instruction, ang religious education nila. Yan ang kulang sa ating mga Pilipino. So sabi ko yon. So tinawag ko yung apat sa isang kwarto. Naupo ako. Sabi ko eh, ako yung pagpasensyahan ninyo kung ako yung naging offensive sa inyong apat. Pero ang doktrina ng Iglesia ni Cristo, hindi na tinuturo na si Jesus ay Diyos na totoo. Tao lamang siya. Kaya Iglesia ni Cristo. Cristo na parang si Mohammed. Nung dinidiscuss ko na sa kanila, sabihin niya, hindi ko kasi sabi, tinuro yan ang pastor namin. Eh ako'y pagpasensyahan ninyo kasi tinuturo ko lamang yung paninindigan ng atolikong simbahan. And they were in a quandary. What makes you Christian is because of the central mystery of faith. And the central mystery of the Christian faith is the Blessed Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three persons in one God. Diyos na sang tatlo. Yun ang pinakapuso ng ating pananampalataya bilang mga Kristiyano. Ikalawa, na ang nagturo sa atin na ang Diyos ay sang tatlo ay walang iba kung di si Jesus na Diyos na totoo at taong totoo. Yun ang dalawang pinakamahalaga. Second important central mystery is that Jesus is true God and true man. The flesh God. The incarnate Word, the Word made flesh, and the Word was made flesh, and He dwelt among us. Another mystery of the Christ, the mystery of the Incarnation. That is the second most important. Why? Because it is Jesus of Nazareth who introduced us to the Father by asking us to call God as Abba, and who sent us the Holy Spirit as Paraclete, on Pentecost. Amen? Amen? Without Jesus, we would not have known that Jesus is God. We would not have known that there are three persons in one God. That is why something happened to God in the New Testament. Isa yung sa mga tanong ko sa seminaryo. 
sa mga magpapare, anong, anong meron ang Diyos ngayon na wala siya noon? Anong meron ang Diyos ngayon na wala siya noon? Well, sa mga sasagutin sa akin ng seminarista, He is self-sufficient. He is gifts of essence, subsistence. Ano yung sabihin nun? The ground of all being. He is perfect. My answer is no. Something happened to God. Ano yun? Nagkaroon ng laman ang Diyos. At kinuha niya ang laman na iyan sa isang babae ng pangalan na Miriam o Mary. Ang Diyos ng lumang tipan ay Diyos na purong espiritu. Ang Diyos ng bagong tipan ay nagkalaman. At ipinakilala sa atin na isang Diyos tunay, ngunit tatlong persona, ang Ama at ang Anak at ang Espiritu Santo. Mali rin ito na sabihin ha, pinurek ko sa parokya, sa ngala ng Ama at ng Anak at ng Diyos Espiritu Santo. Mali iyon! Sa ngala ng Ama at ng Anak at ng Espiritu Santo, kung naidagdag pa yung Diyos. Malinaw yon. Those little things need to be corrected. In other words, what makes you a Christian is two things. Number one, the Trinity. And number two, Jesus of Nazareth. The rest flow out of that central truth, that central mystery of the faith. Is Mary the mother of God central mystery? No. That is only secondary truth, dependent on whom? Dependent on the Trinity. Why? Because she is mother of God. And who is God? Jesus of Nazareth, who is true God and true man. Is it important as a dogma? The answer is yes. In other words, the heart of Mary is to point us to God and never talk about herself. She always talks about God. If you talk about Marian devotion, Mary, the most fundamental titan of Mary is that she is God-bearer, mother of God. After mother of God, but it's the second most important dogma, that she is virgin before, during, and after the birth of Christ. And number three, that she is immaculately conceived, immaculate conception. And number four, that she has assumed into heaven both body and soul. Four truths. But what is the most fundamental truth? That she is mother of God. Mali now? Lahat ng titulo na Our Lady of Fatima, Our Lady of Lourdes, they're important, but they are only one. Secondary to the central truth that Mary is the mother of Jesus who is true God and true man. So the question right now is the first, identity. Who are you? Who are you? And the response to that is this, that we are communion in mission. That we are communion in mission. That is our identity. And in communion and mission, we are part of a community. A community in mission, in a state of mission. And what is mission? Mission is to be good news to all. Better yet, the best description of mission is this. Being Christ to others so that others may be Christ to others too. That is the best definition. Being Christ to others so that others may be Christ to others too. Your value system is Christ-centered. As a community, you may be wearing lay clothing, but you are leaven and you are salt. That is in fact the spirituality of the laity. Why? Because you disappear like leaven. You, you, you disappear in the midst of the world. But you, what? You make things happen by your life. By your identity. By the way you think, the way you feel, the way you choose, 
the way you do. Just nasabi ko, right thinking, right feeling, right choosing, right doing. You know what that is? Virtuous life. That you are men and women of virtue. That you may be walking in the office and people look at you. There is something about Him. Something about Him. The way He talks, the way He moves, the way He deals with us. And that it becomes a powerful witness because the most powerful evangelization is a life of witness. That is the first. Identity is very important. That's why my first question to you, who are you, BLD? Who are you? You have all of these lambs being given to you, and he will have to answer. Alam mo, hindi pita ako ng Copos for Christ, pero ayaw ko dun eh. Alam mo, napilitan lang ako ng asawa ko para sumali dito eh. Ano ang muna mong approach? Your first approach is what? To listen. To listen to his story. To listen to how God is working in him. And to say to him, nothing in this world happens by accident. It was not Copos for Christ. It is BLD because there is a mission for you. And I want you to trace the mission. I want you to find out that this plan of God for you is slowly unfolding and BLD is an instrument of God for you to discover and rediscover once again your mission in the world. You know what that is? From listening, you become shepherds of discernment. And I'd like to put a premium on that, discernment. Where is God leading me? Where is God bringing me? Sigurado yan, magbabago eh. Shepherding, fine. After LSS, alaga naman. Emotional high. But you know the key? is after LSS. It is the pastoral care of the lambs entrusted to you. Because they need to be pastorally nurtured. Because they can get lost still. Why? Because LSS weekend can be an emotional high. Feeling good, feeling good, crying, crying. Kuha na tumba, tatlong beses eh. At pinaupo ako ni Father Adol sa katabi niya. At nung inaanoint niya ako, natumba ako. Nung tumayo ako, inaanoint uli ako. Sabi ko, Father Ado na ito. <laughs> Pero hindi ako yung nawala ng malay. Gumaan lang ang pangaramdam ko. But you see, what is important is the after. What does that mean? The gifts that the Spirit has given you in the church, in the service of the church. What are these gifts? The 12 gifts of the Holy Spirit. Actually, in Galatians, there are nine. It was St. Jerome, whose feast day we celebrated yesterday, who added three more gifts. Pero pag binasa niyo ang Galatians, siyam lang yung gifts. And the gifts will validate whether your shepherding to them is valid. Because the gifts will have to be fruitful. And that is why as shepherds, you are your brother's and sister's keeper till the end. Because you need to be accompaniers of these people. That's the new word now used in the church. Accompaniers. That you are keepers of the memory of God. I love that phrase. You are keepers of the memory of God. And keepers of the memory of God, you know how God moves. You know how God disturbs. 
you know how God has been steering the church that he founded because it is the triad God who founded the Catholic Church. That's the first. Who are you? Number two, second, according to Paul the Six. The second objective of Vatican II that is still valid today and for you it is valid is renewal. To make things new again. Now, Paul the Six moved on. He said, how do you renew Christian life? There are two instruments of renewal. The first instrument is the Word of God. And the Word of God in Scriptures. Open the treasures of Scriptures. That is why it is important for you as shepherds to read Scriptures every day. We call that Lectio Divina. Lectio Continua. Araw-araw, binabasa. Ninalamnam ang mga salita ng Diyos. Yun ang inyong panalangin araw-araw. Let the Word speak to you. And for me, I would suggest that you read the Gospel of Luke because it is the year of Luke. If you have been sensitive, every Sunday it's always the Gospel of Luke, right? But by the time it is first Sunday of Advent, we move to the Gospel of Matthew. Kasi tatlong cycle. Cycle A, Cycle B, Cycle C. Nasa Cycle C tayo. Kaya maganda, meron kayong natawag na pandasal. O yung mga Bible diary, pwede niyong basahin yun. Relish it. Why? Because the Word of God has power to transform. Saint Jerome said, ignorance of Scripture is ignorance of Christ. That is why as shepherds, you consider yourself under shepherds in the measure that the real shepherd is Jesus who guides you in the way of the Word. Because the Word has power to transform if we only allow the Word to transform us. This Sunday is the gospel of faith. What is the prayer? And that is be our prayer. Increase our faith. And what is that faith? That faith is what? Not only knowing about Jesus, but knowing Jesus. It is not only a set of doctrines that you will learn, but above all, it is a personal encounter with Christ. And LSS is a personal encounter with Christ. And who accompanies these lambs to Jesus but you? Why? Because you have something that they do not have. What is that? You know about Jesus. But not only that, you know Jesus. You know Jesus. May tatlong salita na ginagamit ko eh, baka gusto niyo gamitin. Una ay pananampalataya. Tatlong salita ang nakapaloob doon. Namnamin. Una, namnamin. Palahin. At taya. Napakayaman na salita noon. Pananampalataya, ha? Namnamin. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Namnamin mo. Napakatamis ng Diyos. Napakatamis. Kuminsan lamang ay masaklap ang pagbubuhat ng kanyang katamisan. Mabigat ang krus kuminsan. Namnamin mo. Taste and see. Number two, pala. Ano yun? Palahin mo ang ugnayan mo kay Jesus. Pag pinapala, pinalalalim. Tama? Palahin mo. At ang pagpala ay mabigat. Malaking misyon. Pinagpapawisan ka. In other words, faith is effort. Renewal is effort. Ibig sabihin, effort na umaten ka ng prayer meeting, ng caring circle. Effort na ikaw ay pumasok sa pag-aaral. Hindi porke ikaw ay nag-praise the Lord na, alam mo na lahat, di magic ito. Pala, palahin. Ikatlo, kapag napala mo na, 
handa mo nang itaya ang buhay mo. Manindigan ka sa tama. Itataya mo ang buhay mo sa mga tao sa bahay na hindi ka naiintindihan. Bakit pa ang hilig mo nang pumunta dyan sa BLD na yan? Kapag baliw na. Pag inuuna mo pa yan kaysa sa pamilya mo. Bakit? Ano bang nakita mo riyan? Ang sagot mo, abay hindi ka sumali. Tama? What does that mean? You have discovered the pearl of great price. That you can even leave your family because of the pearl of great price. But more importantly, you want your family to be drawn to the pearl of great price. Ano yung kalawang salita? Pananali. Saligan. There are two words about saligan. Faith is constitutive of your life. And number two, it is normative of your life. Two powerful words, constitutive. I cannot live without faith. It is constitutive of who I am. My identity is linked to my faith. I cannot be who I am without my faith. Kumbinsido ako doon, constitutive. Di ba? Constitution, saligan. Ikalawa, normative. Lahat ng aking gagawin. Panuntunan ng aking pananampalataya kay Jesus. Normative. The term of reference on the way I judge the world is by means of my faith. Very important words. Constitutive and normative. Ikatlong salita. Pananampalataya. Pananali. Pananali. At pagtitiwala. Faith is trust. Faith is trust that God in the end will be victorious in my life. Faith is trusting the Lord amidst the darkness of this world. Amidst all the dangers that this world can offer me, I trust in His love and mercy. But I will do everything in my power to make effort in order that the trust becomes a symbol of my life with Jesus. Kaya nga, kasabihan natin, nasa Diyos ang awa, nasa tao ang Kaya may tatlong galaw ang pananampalataya. Ano po yung tatlong galaw? Sa shepherding ninyo, unang galaw, luhod, upo, tinti. Okay? Tatlong galaw. Una, luhod. Sabayan yung lumuhod ang mga pinapastulan nyo. Luhod. Anong luhod? Magdasal. Magdasal. Ikalawa, upo. Ibig sabihin, eh, sabayan kayong mag-aral. Huwag kayong sasagot sa hindi nyo alam. Huwag kayong gagawa ng bagong doktrina. Mamay mga shepherds na ito, hindi naman alam kung ano yung mga pinagsasabi, mga pamahihin na sinasabi. <laughs> May ibang mga shepherds na gano'n, puro pamahihin ang mga sinasabi. Kung hindi nyo alam, magtanong kayo. Eh, sinasabi ko, eh, bawal na maglakad ng, ano eh, ng pag-biernes. Dapat eh, nakalungod kayo habang naglalakad. Ang sasagot ko sa iyo, hindi yan ang gusto ng Diyos. Eh, masakit na ang tuhod ko. Kaya nga, ayaw ng Diyos yun. Masira pa tuhod mo. Ikalawa, paglo, pagpupo. Ibig sabihin yung pag-aaral. Ito yung tinatawag na theology on the armchair. You have to study. You have to be school. And that is why one of the things that I am presenting to you is that as shepherds, your job is not finished when you do shepherding. It must be a continuous learning of the faith. And that means studying the Bible and studying the catechism of the Catholic Church. Maraming hindi alam yan. Magtanuin ko kayo, ha? Ano ang sanctoral cycle sa liturgia? <laughs> ang sanctoral cycle ay mga piyesta ng mga banal. At tatlo ang hierarchy ng piyesta. Number one, solemnity, Number two, feast. At number three, memorial. 
Tama? O alam niyo ang what are the four holidays of obligation in the Philippines? Number one, December December 25. Ano yun? Birthday of? Okay, number two, January 1. Ano yun? Mary, Mother of God. Number three, December 8. Ano yun? Maculate Conception. Number four, All Sundays of the year. Holidays of obligation. Kaya bumabalik na tayo sa ganun eh. Pinihikayan na namin mga pare. Bumalik na kayo sa simbahan. Nasasanday sa live stream. Kasi may tatakot mo kami sa COVID. O tatakot sa COVID, pero nakikita mo naman sa mall, ikot ng ikot doon. Pero yung pagsimba, hindi mo nakikita. Tama? Tama. Mga kahaling katoliko ba? Tatakot mo ako, Monsignor eh. Bakit? Baka ko mag-COVID. Eh, pa'n nakita kasi Century City Mall noong isang araw? Ito yung namibili roon. Ay, nahuli ako. O yun, sinasabi ko. What does that mean? Four holy days of obligation. What are the three Marian solemnities? Sige. December 8. Tapos? Ano yan? Solemnities. January 1. And? And? August 15. What are the two Marian feasts? Ano yun? Marian feasts, ha? Ano mo yung rosary? Ano mo yung rosary? Memorial lang yun. Memorial lang yun. Mahilig lang ikaw mag-rosaryo kaya ginawa mo piyesta. Ano yun? Number one. Ano? September 8 and? September 8. Solemnity nga eh. And? May nagsabi. September 8. Ano yun? Birthday. Okay. Ano yung salawa? Ikalawa ay? Hindi. 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 Yan ang mga shepherds ng BND. Yung ikalawa ay? Feast of the Visitation. May 31, dalawa lamang ang Marian Feast. So alam niyo na, may solemnity, may feast, may memorial. Okay? Ang Feast of the Rosary, memorial. Ano yun? Obligatory. Ibig sabihin, you have to celebrate it. Ano magkakaiba ng solemnity sa feast? Ang solemnity, nagsa-celebrate yan, Afternoon of the previous day, after 4 o'clock. Kaya ang Sundays ay solemnity. Bakit? 4 o'clock, ngayong hapon, linggo na. Kaya tinatawag kong Sunday Mass on a Saturday. O, kaya yung tawag yung anticipated. Kasi linggo na nga yun. Pag nakasimpa ka ng 4 o'clock, Ano man ang sinimpahan mo, halimbawa sumimpa ka ng 5 o'clock, may kasal sa Manila Cathedral. Does that satisfy Sunday obligation? The answer is yes. You are not obliged to hear the readings per Sunday. You're just obliged to go to Mass on a Sunday. Hindi yung lalamit sa akin, anong reading, Father? Hindi yung yata Sunday, hindi mo nisimpa ako bukas. Sumimpa ka na. Ate, sumimpa ka na. Ang hinihiling lang ng, sim ng simbahan ay go to mass on Sunday. Wala naman sinasabi doon na you have to hear the readings of the Sunday. You go to on Sunday. Oh, kaya na magsisimula? Na? Mahalang mahabang talk ito. Let's just go. Maraming nalalaman ng mga shepherds. Nakita niyo? Alam niyo, yung maliliit na bagay na yun, kumisan yun ang pinag-uusapan eh. Di ba? Alam niyo, shepherd, sabihin sa iyo, shepherd, alam ko ho, piyesta yan. Hindi. Hindi piyesta yan. Bakit? Sabi ni Monsignor Jerry, hindi sabi yun, ang guru ng simbahan. Mamaya lahat pumunta sa akin. 
Renewal. Number two, well, how do we renew the Christian life? Bible, ang number one. Number two, liturgy. The second way to renew the life of this person is to go to Mass. Is to receive the sacrament. There is a big difference between going to Mass, person to person, and going to Mass through live stream. People who are live streaming are simply spiritually nourished, but they are not actually celebrating Mass. In order to celebrate the sacrament, it must be person to person. That is what the church teaches. Now, during pandemic times, the church has relaxed the obligation. Why? Because of the danger. However, now, the church invites us to gather. Alam yung dalawang salita eh. Simba, samba. Simba, samba. Anong kahulugan ng simba? Malay word yan. Gathering. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng simba. To gather with the people of God. Because church is gathering. Gathering yan. Pagtitipon. Kaya nga ang kahulugan ay iglesia. Pagtitipon. Simbahan ay lugar ng pagtitipon. Ikalawa, samba. Worship. At isa lamang ang ating sinasamba. Yan ang Diyos. Si Maria at ang mga banal ay veneration. Paggalang sa kanila. Clear tayo doon? Okay. Very important for us. Renewal. So, there are two ways by which we can renew ourselves. We renew by means of the Word and by means of the liturgy. So, as shepherds, you invite them. Number one, read the Bible. Guide them. Guide them in the reading of the Bible. And I suggest you read first the Gospel of Luke for them to be guided. Number two, for them to be actively involved in the liturgy. Why? It is not simply hearing Mass. That is a wrong notion of celebration. Rather, it is celebrating Eucharist. It is participation in the Eucharistic Life of the church. Pagsamba. Number three is ecumenism. Building bridges with separated brothers and sisters. And number four, relationship with the world. The world around us. That the world around us needs to be transformed by the message of the gospel. That is what the gospel is all about. To transform the world. Four things. The fourth one is very important. It is to stop that sense of mission on the Lamb entrusted to you. What is the mission? Where is God calling him or her? Where is God calling him or her? Is it family? Is it strengthening marriage? Is it being a good Christian father and good Christian mother? Is it being a young person studying in the university? Is it the family in the midst of the political order? Is it in the midst of economy and business? Kasi nasabi ko eh, Kapag ikaw'y nagdadasal, kristyano ka ba o hindi? Kristyano. Kapag ikaw'y nagnonobena, kristyano ka ba o hindi? Kristyano. Kapag nasa bahay ka, naguhugas ng pinggan, kristyano ka ba o hindi? Kristyano. Kapag nagsusulat ka ng assignment, sumasagot ka sa assignment, kristyano ka ba o hindi? Kristyano. Kapag nasa business corporation ka, kristyano ka ba o hindi? Kristyano. Kapag ikaw'y nasa politika, Kristiyano ka ba o hindi? Kristiyano. Ibig sabihin, walang tinatawag na boundaries ng pagiging Kristiyano. In other words, renewal envelopes the whole human life in the totality of who you are as a human person. That, brothers and sisters, started in 1960 
1962 to 1965. I'd like to move on. The question that was asked of me from Joe, sabi ko, what will be the focus of my talk? I'm going to my second uh, reflection now. How can we become a lay shepherd like Jesus, the good shepherd? And what are the qualities of a shepherd? Okay. What are the qualities of a shepherd? <coughs> How do I answer that? Let us use scriptures. Acts 2.42 sets the tone of the life of BND. Aralin ninyong mabuti. I go, they, the Christians, followers of the way, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Reflect again your life in BLD because your life reflects this. And thus, as shepherds, you should be able to draw the life. Because the first thing that the Lamb will tell you in your first encounter is resistance, anxiety, problems, issues of schedule, so many concerns that would inhibit them from engagement, right? May business ako, aalis ako, pupunta ako dito. Ang sagot, harapin natin yan. Lahat ng mga issues, masasagot. But there are four pillars of BND. And I go back once again to the ideal community described by St. Luke in his Acts of the Apostles. Number one, they devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles. What does that mean? Teaching, learning, studying. What does that mean? This is what we call the movement of accompaniment. You accompany the lambs. You enable the lamb to see the good of what being Catholic is all about. The apostles' teaching. What does the church teach us? What are the teachings of the church? And as I said to you, the two central mysteries of the Catholic Church are the Trinity and Jesus. The rest follows. The rest follows. Of course, I will have to elaborate on that regarding the teaching, but that is very important. You are what we call teachers as shepherds. And as teachers, you know the way of the church. You know how to answer the questions, the deepest questions of the human heart. Why? Because you are schooled in the ways of the church. Which means constant learning on the part of the shepherds is very important. And this is something that we Catholics need to discover, rediscover, and renew. That sense of teaching. Example, what are the teachings of the church on the sacraments? There are seven sacraments. Amen? But you can group them into three categories. The sacrament of initiation. What are the sacraments of initiation? Baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. The sacraments of initiation. The sacraments of healing and reconciliation. What are they? The sacrament of penance and reconciliation. The sacrament of the anointing of the sick. These are the two sacraments. And number three, the sacraments of communion and mission, holy orders, and matrimony. 
What does that mean? Knowledge is important. Knowledge is important. Pag tinanong, uh, ate, tatanungin ko lang sa'yo, how are we going to be judged in the end? How will we know that we are going to heaven? What is the standard by which we shall be judged? Sharing yun. Why? Because this person in front of you is going to ask about his end. Pag namatay ako, saan ako pupunta? Ano ang panuntunan ng buhay ko para makilala ko at mas mapalapit ako sa Diyos? How will you be judged? How will you be judged? Answer? No? How will you be judged? You will be judged according to? According to? According to conscience. And what is the standard of conscience? The standard of conscience is do good, avoid evil. At the end of our lives, we shall be questioned according to the standard of love. How much have you loved? That will be the standard. Not simply how good a Catholic you have become. No, you are good as a Catholic in the measure that you love. You are good as a husband in the measure that you express your love to your spouse and to your children and to the world around you. Love is the standard. Daniel, na? We shall be judged according to love. So, can an atheist be saved? The answer is, yes. If this atheist truly love in the most genuine way, can this atheist truly be saved? The answer is yes. But the answer is, can this atheist still search for something more? than not believing in God? The answer is yes, because in the deepest recesses of his heart, his soul will always search for that mystery which is greater than himself. That is what Christian life is all about. To discover the value of love according to your state of life. How much have you loved as a grandmother? How much as you have you loved as a businessman? Because all things considered, God sees the little nitty gritties that we perform every day, the attitudes that we have, the way we look at the world. Because nothing is kept apart from God. no? Because God sees everything. And the manner by which we shall be judged is, how much have you loved? What does that mean? As shepherds, you will do a lot of shepherding in terms of introspection. As shepherds, you will talk less and listen more. Uy, paalala mo yun, ha? Please do not pontificate. Hindi yung aga nito ha, dito yung aga nito ha, dito yung aga nito, yung mga labs naman. No. What is your story? Where has God been leading you? What are the bumps on the road? What are the trials that you have faced? What are the crisis events of your life? I'd like you to ask that question. Some of them may have so much experience of depression for the past two years. Why? Because they lost their business, they lost their jobs. And they're at the brink of suicide. Do not brush that off. Why? Because this person needs someone to listen to them. My spouse left me. My spouse left me. At times, ang dami lumalapit sa akin. Kuminsan, nandun lang ako sa Christy sa Rockwell kasi ako rin ang chaplain doon. Father, can you, uh, can you have a minute? Sure. Sit down here. Close the door, please. I just don't know 
how to face myself. Why? I I want to kill myself, Father. And why? What happened? He lost his job. He lost his business. He lost his wife. And uh, tell me how you feel. I really don't know how I feel. I I feel I'm just in a in a hole. And I just look at him. Tell me more how you feel. You know, feelings are neither right nor wrong. Boy, learning you sa MA. Nama? Yeah. Pero galing yun sa katikisim. Feelings are neither right nor wrong. It's only when you act on those feelings that morality comes in. But that's how you feel. Let's talk about it. I don't have anything to say. After my 30 minutes of talking, because I'm going to miss you, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. But you tell me what's going to happen in your mind. How about you tell me what's going to happen? It's going to help you. Okay. It's all right. It's all right to cry. I was never thought by my thought by my father to cry, Father, because men do not cry. Oh, that's heresy. Sige, iyak. Pinahiyak ko. Kaya lang habang umiiyak, tumitingin ako sa rilo ko, yung mga tao na tumulat. Kaya lang ba matatapos to iyak ko? Tapos sasabihin niya sa akin, Father, alam kong misa na kasi eh. Kasi pwede ba dito muna ako? Sige, okay lang. Tapos mamaya ang pag-usap tayo kung gusto mo. Hindi na, um, maganda pa karamdam ko eh. Alright, now, I will ask you to see me every Saturday, ha? Just to say hello. Just to tell me, hi, Father. Ha? Promise. Okay. Go ganun. Isasabihin ako sa inyo, ha? Nag-install na ako ng confessions sa Rockwell sa church, no? Ngayon, siguro mga three weeks na. Confessions in the morning, confessions in the afternoon. Bukha ako ng pare. Yung magmimisa, sabi ko, those who would like to go to confession, there is a priest at the back, I'm allowing you to go to confession. Please do so. You can go to confession and still celebrate Mass. Lo, ang tao daw, mahaba-haba ng confession. There is a research in some confessions. Some of my confessors ask me, Father, they have not been to confession for the past two, three years. Isn't that a good sign? Some of your lambs have not been to confession since their first communion. Tama? And that must be thoroughly, thoroughly addressed by the shepherd. There must be a very good examination of conscience. Wag yung kamitin yung Ten Commandments. Hindi lagi Ten Commandments. May iba't ibang pamamaraan ng examination of conscience. Bibigyan ko kayo, pero hindi ngayon. Iba na yun. Kasi ang gagawin ko ay Ignatian examination of conscience. Say Ignatius of Loyola. Why? Because little things are very important. It's not the action that must be confessed. Yes, they're important. Integral confession. Right? I slept with a woman who is not my wife. How many times? Since my last confession, many times. Okay, fine. Since the last confession. This is grade school pa yung last confession. Ano, many times. Huwag mo nang hilingin. O kasi ako nagtuturo kung paano magpakumpisal sa mga seminaryo. Yun ang assignment ko eh. So, integral confession is this. You must mention mortal sins, species, and number. Pag species and number, I committed the sin against the flesh. Okay? That's so general. So, ang confessor sasabihin, kasi kayo, tutulong kayo, ano yung sabihin ng sin of the flesh? What are the specific sin of the flesh? Merong sin of the flesh regarding watching pornography. Number two, prostitution. Number two, extramarital affairs. Marami yun. 
At sa kumpisa, sasabihin mo yung specific sin na yun, with number, ilang beses. Pag several times, sabihin mo lang, marami beses na, father. Okay, fine. Because you are able to gauge since the last confession, the state of the soul. Why? Apat ang galaw ng isang confessor. Kayo rin, parang confessor kayo kasi mga sa inyo eh. Kung ikinumpisa sa inyo, huwag yun ako sino pinagsasabihan. <coughs> ha? Confidentiality yan. Ha? Kaya kinakailangan talaga school ng bawat isa. Pag hindi nyo alam, lapitan nyo ang pare. Patay ako ngayon. <laughs> Sige. O, tutulungan ko kayo. Sige, tutulungan ko kayo. Father, ganito, ganito. How do you deal with that? Okay, this is how you deal with that. Mga specific clauses kasi sa shepherding ninyo, magbubukas yan ang buhay nila. Tama? Ay talagang kalkali ninyo. Bakit? Kasi ang demonyo, ang gagawin sa kanya, huwag mo sabihin niya, nakakahiya. Pero kayo naman na shepherd, sabihin, parang disconnected. Merong isang bagay na hindi niya sinasabi sa akin eh. Pero kahit hindi ka sinasabi sa akin, ano? Sabihin mo, gano'n. Sige, sabihin mo. Hindi <laughs> naman gano'n, baka manipawala na yun. Susan the shepherd, asan na siya? Ayaw na akong lumapit sa inyo. Nagahanap mo ibang shepherd. Inakalkal nyo lang kung mabuti. Pero gano'n lang sabihin, ano yun? Kasi parang nakikita ko may kulang eh. But please, take an account of each of the lamb entrusted to you because each one has a unique story. Why? Because the more they open themselves to you, the more the Spirit will dwell on them because the ground is fertile. The ground is fertile. Naku, napakahalaga ng trabaho ninyo. Yan ay iaharap sa inyo ng Diyos pag kayo ay nasa kabilang buhay niya. Anong ginawa mo rito sa taong ito? Nung shepherd ka? Sabi mo, hindi ko po alam. Ibig sabihin eh, ang pag-aalaga ay pamamastol. Kaya napakahalaga ng trabaho ng shepherd eh. Napakahalaga kayo yung mga ginto ng BLD ha? Kasi yung pag-uulang ninyo to be shepherd, that is a mission. Why? Because that lamb entrusted to you will be under your stewardship for the rest of your life. The care of his or her spiritual moral life is under your hands, is on your hands. So that's the first. Number one, apostles teaching. Learn. And you know too well, you have a series of questions, no, in terms of shepherding. Pero alam mo, sa akin, it's not so much only the shepherding before LSS, but it's the post-shepherding. Eh. It's bringing them together in caring circle. Is there caring circle na tawag? Word sharing. Word sharing. Word sharing. Okay. So, yun ang ginagawa ninyo. They will be clustered into groups, no? Circle. Okay, circle. And they have to meet once a week, right? Once a week. Yeah. Once a week. Don't be too heavy, ah. Don't be too heavy. Number two, to fellowship. What does that mean? The gathering. This is very important in renewal. The gathering of the people of God. And there is more challenge for you to gather with your lambs. With a greater community. O, tanda-tanda ako nung ako'y bagong sa BLD. May iba sa inyo, nakarating, nakarating ako sa PICC. Tandaan niyo yun? My God, 3,500. When I entered, nangingilabot ako. Tapos si Father Ado, nandun. So sabi ko, my God, look at this. The numbers, the harvest, so many. The gathering is very important. Why? The fellowship is important. Why? Because in shepherding, you do a lot of sharing on a meal. On a simple meal. Not an expensive meal. One solid, one liquid. Do not splurge. Do not try to prove something to your lamb. Ito lang, tigisa tayong sandwich. 
Mantikeya lang yan. Yun ba siguro? Konting haha. Hindi ba ba? May mayonnaise, may ham. Mamaya may kamatis, tapos may lentus. Tapos nasa ano na, nasa, nasa clubhouse na, may itlog. Tapos may potato chips, uh, may macaroni salad, pero wala na. <laughs> Yan ang BLT. <laughs> Abay, hindi ba masaya naman sa salo-salo? Church is in fact fellowship meal. Church is the gathering. Why? Because when you eat, all defenses are down. A person can be as honest about his life and her life with you. Why? Because there are certain things that he or she would inadvertently share to you. And later on, you would say, you made mention of this, just out of the blues. Is there something about this? I've been trying to tell you this, and I'd like to share something about myself. You know what is important in fellowship? Whatever happens in fellowship and sharing is kept in the circle. A shepherd's confidentiality is essential. The community must not be a group of gossipers or else you will lose members. What does that mean? Confidentiality. Why? Because this person has opened a most important, vulnerable story of his or her life. And you must treasure that as one story entrusted to you. If you need to be consulted or to consult, then consult elders, but no one else. And never talk about the sharings of one lamb with another, please. That is essential in fellowship. Why? Because in fellowship, people simply spontaneously share what is in their heart. And when they share something in their heart, they are most vulnerable. As shepherds, you are accompanyers. You are mature Christians willing to take care of this person entrusted to you. Ayan sa akin nga eh, the smaller the, the number of lambs, the better eh. Tama? Kasi mahal mo talaga, mahalagahan. Kaya nga hindi ba ang panawagan eh, more shepherds. More shepherds. Ang dami yung shepherds, oh. Shepherds. Number three, to the breaking of bread. This is a phrase referring to the Eucharist. Enabling the lambs to go to Sunday Mass is important. Enabling the lambs to do adoration of the Blessed Sacrament is important. Bringing the person in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel is essential. Why? Because second only to the Mass is the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Adoration. Please take note of the word. Ad oro. Mouth to mouth. When you worship Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, in the monstrance, you do mouth to mouth with Jesus. Something happens in your life with Jesus. Something happens. Something trans is transformed in your life. The grace of conversion happens why? Because at the end of this, the goal of LSS is the goal of LSS is conversion. Metanoia. And what is metanoia? A change of attitude. A change of worldview. A change of lifestyle. A change. But the change must be slowly but surely. That is why accompaniment is very important. I'll give an example. Kaso. Ito kaso ko na binibigay sa mga seminaryan. A couple, gay. They enter into LSS. Separate sila. Okay ba ng, ng circuit, ng group? Ang tawag nyo? Ng, 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 ng shepherd, no? Tapos sasabihin ng isa, uh, kapatid, kasi I'm actively engage with this person and I've been living with him or with her. We've been living together for four years. Right? SSA, same-sex attraction, is not sinful. 
Are we clear? Same-sex attraction. What does that mean? Homosexual orientation is not sinful. The church teaches us that it is a moral disorder. Now, please take note. Let me interpret that. Tinuturo na si Pahan yun eh, moral disorder. What does that mean? There is a tendency in this person to committing something that is sinful. But each one of us has a moral disorder. Why? Because we have a weak flesh. Each one of us, including me, we have a weak flesh. We have a tendency to committing sin. You know what that is? Concupiscence. In original sin, we got that concupiscence, that weak flesh. That flesh that has a tendency to committing something that is sinful. And what is sin? It's a transgression against the law of God. It is an abuse of freedom. It is arrogance of power. It is a stain. These are all images of sin. But is homosexual orientation sinful? The answer is no. It is not. It is only when he acts out that homosexual orientation into a homosexual act. That homosexual act is sinful. Ano ang sinful? Three conditions. Great matter, full knowledge, full consent. Are we clear? Isa yun sa pag-uusapan ninyo. Great matter, full knowledge, full consent. The three conditions of sin. Great matter. May isang bagay na mali. There is something wrong with having sex with a person of the same sex or even a person of the opposite sex outside of marriage. Mali pa rin yun. Heterosexual ka pero nakihipag-sex ka sa mga babae. O ikaw ay heterosexual na babae, nakihipag-sex ka, tatlong lalaki. Mali ba yun? Ang sagot, oo, oh, oh, mali yun. Why? Because sexual intercourse must only always be in the context of marriage. Doon lang pwede sa ating mga katoliko. Marriage, it is that marriage that enables the marital embrace. Ito niyo, sexual intercourse as marital embrace to become acceptable. Why? Because every marital embrace, every sexual intercourse must be both unitive and procreative must be love-giving and life-giving. So ito ngayon, homosexual. What do you do with him? O si share sa sa'yo, sabihin pa sa'yo sa grupo ninyo, pwede tayo lang dalawang mag-uusap. Kasi usually, ang may homosexual orientation, nahihiya. Or pwede rin naman din siya nahihiya kasi kitang-kita mo naman. Tama? Kitang-kita mo, sabihin niya, ito ako. Alright, so how do you deal with it? How do you deal with it? Number one, accompaniment. Number two, gradually. What does that mean? At the end of the day, it's still in him a life of chaste living. And what is chaste living? Control your sexual appetite. Eh, father, o sabihin sa'yo, uh, kapatid, eh, I'm living with this person, eh. Alright. Can you show your affection to this person other than physical contact? Remember Chapman? Five languages of love. What are the five languages of love? Number one, physical contact. Number two, words of affirmation. Number three, acts of service. Uh, number four, quality time. Uh, 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 number five, gift giving. Lima. Nasabi ko sa mga seminary, sa pagpare na kayo, ito gawin yung penance. Ang physical contact, isa sa lima. Ngayon, mahal mo ang lalaki ito. Okay. Pwede mo bang ipakita sa kanya ang pagmamahal mo maliban sa sex, sa sexual contact? Kasi apat pa eh. Words of affirmation. Ano pa? Gift giving. Ano pa? Acts of service. Number four. Quality time. Aba, yung quality time. Diba? 
just holding the hand of your of your companion. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Slowly, what happens? This person now, as he or she grows older, will slowly cease to engage in sexual contact because there are other ways to express his or her love with his or her partner. Claro? Is he simply answer? Yes, no. Pwede may gano'n eh. Alam mo ang malaking kasalanan sa ang simbahan? Homophobia. Yung pinatidirihan ng mga gays at lesbians. Yung pinabrand sila na, ah kayo, mga sodomites kayo. Ang sinasabi nila to? Who are you? Wrong. There needs to be a support group. And BLD can respond to that. There is a support group known as Courage. There are a group of gays, lesbians, the LGBTQIAA plus community. But can you have that group in BLD? And they are accepted as part of the community. What does that mean? You become more inclusive. Na ang mundo ninyo hindi lamang sa heterosexuals. Isang hamo ko yun. You can be more understanding. Why? Kasi ang tendency nga ninyo, parang ang mundo ay mag-asawa. O di kaya singles na. Hindi nyo alam yung mga singles na yun. Kung ano ang kanilang sexual orientation. At kung minsan, na sexual orientation, itinatago. At kung minsan, dahil sa itinatago, doon nagkakaroon ng kadiliman, doon nangyayari ang kasalanan dahil sa itinatago at sa kadiliman. Gets nyo? Maaari na inyong shepherding, pero limang tao, at sa limang taong yon may isa na hindi agad-agad nagbubukas. Pero sabihin niyo sa'yo, ito ako. How then do you deal with him? I can deepen that. But that I am giving you a classic case. Number two, second case, ha? Mag-asawa, hindi ka sa simbahan, hindi yung tatanggapin? Yes or no? Okay. <laughs> Ang ganda nga mangyayari, pumunta sa pare. Pero kayo, ang muna mo sasabihin eh, pag-usapan natin yan, number one. Number two, ano ang kwento ninyong dalawa? O, sabihin natin, kwento ganito. Maraming kwento ganito. Eh kasi, Father, uh, may asyawa siya sa iba eh. eh yung analamit, di ba, ibinababay. Naghihintay kami. Actually, legally separated na siya, yung lalaki. Pero, tagal kasi ng degree of nullity. By the way, ha? Ang annulment ngayon, libre na. Donation na lang. <laughs> Alam mo, John, ako kailangan itong seminar na to. <laughs> Kasi, ang sabi ni Pope Francis, Pope Francis to, ang napakamahal ay yung proseso ng annulment. Six digits ko minsan. Sa, sabi kayo ni Pope Francis, libre na yan. Hingi na lang kayo ng donasyon. O gano'n na lang, magbigay ko kung kaya. Kaya nga sabi sa akin, mga kami judicial vicar, yung mga paring in charge niyan, na oh, wala na kaming income. <laughs> sabi ko, bakit? Eh, sinabi ng Santo Papa, eh, libre na raw. Sabi ni Cardinal, libre na raw. Puro libre, libre, libre. Eh, paano naman yung pagpapotocopy, pagsusulat, pagpapahit ng ganito. 
Pero hiningi nyo ay ano na lang, donation na lang. Pinagbabawalan kaming magbigay ng rate. And we have to facilitate. Sabi ni Pope Francis lately, bilisan nyo ha. Maraming hindi nakakakuha dahil sa kabagalan ng mga nagsimbahan. Di ba ganun? Okay, so ganun ang nangyayari. O oh, sige, prosesong ganun. Pag ganun, may isang grupo dapat na mag-aaral nun. <coughs> Gawin yung struktura yun para maiayos ang kanilang pagsasama. Ngayon, anong hihilingin mo? O, ito na. Eh, paano gagawin namin? O, sige, proseso natin yung decree of nullity na yan. Sige natin ang decree of nullity. However, ang i-request ko sa inyong dalawa, ha? Wala na ngayon sinasabing they are living in a state of sin. Wala nang ganon. Wala na. O, ang tawag na sa kanila, they are living in an irregular situation. Irregular. Ano yun? Out of the rule. Out of the accepted rule of the church. Nakita nyo, malaking pagkakaiba, no? Kasi sabi niya, they are living in a state of sin. Para bang bawat galaw nila, they are sinners? Sabi ni Pope Francis, No! They are living in an irregular situation. Okay, since you are living in an irregular situation, let us review your case of submitting your degree of nullity. Ang tawag ay degree of nullity. That's the technical phrase. Or, in parlance of the lay, annulment with the Judicial Court of Manila o Paranaque. Ang mahalaga, kung saan ka nakatira at kung saan ka nasal, by the way, doon ka mag apply sa diocese na yun. Sa Manila, may kamilisan, marami kaming judicial judges, eh, sila ang nakahatol. Ang pipirma na lang si Cardinal. Ano? Mabilis! Mabilis! Actually nga eh, talagang, ano eh, ang mga dahilan ngayon para magka-degree of nullity eh, kasing dami na, pag kami kayo nag apply ng divorce. Marami na. Okay, so pag na-establish na yun, hindi oh, pa sila naahanan. Ano gagawin? Huwag kayo magsipi. Okay, ikalawa, ayusin natin yan, harapin natin yan. Tingnan natin ang kaso ninyo sa korte ng Maynila. Dalawa yun. Huwag kayo magsipi hanggang sa LSS. Tapos mangupisal kayo. Di ba may confession? LSS. Oh. Oh. Kailangan din kilalanin nyo yung pari mong papakumpisal. Mamaya eh, hindi pa siya updated eh, kung ano nyo rin ako pinagsasasabi niya. Nakuha nyo, may mga pari ganon. Ano ba yan? Sabi din mo, senior ganito. Kasi pari, eh kung kasi kung ano kung ako sino-sino mga pari eh. Ibig sabihin, be careful also that the priest that you are getting has a pastoral heart. Hindi sapagkat nasasabang hindi ka sa akin. Hindi ka na pwede mong umun yun. May mga kari pa rin ganun eh. Pero nang sabihin ko, o oh, sige, mga umun yun kayo, huwag kayo magsipi hanggang sa LSS. Pwede ba kayo maghiwalay ng kwarto? Oo. So maghiwalay kayo ha. Walang, walang pagtatali. Ganun din na sinasabi mo, habawa may in-interview akong kakasali. Nagsasama na sila. O sabihin ko sa kanila, Ay ba yung may ginagawa? Yung, alam nyo, ginagawa ng mag-asawa. Opo, father eh. Okay, mga umpisal kayo ha. Pagka umpisal na ito, hanggang sa kasal ninyo ha, bawal. Bawal magtabi. Huwag kang tatabi ha, ikaw. O sige, yung father. O yun. Ang laban lang naman ng sipahan, nagtatalik sa labas ng kasal. Nag-gets nyo? Okay, medyo may kahirapan yun, pero... <laughs> pero possible? Possible. That's what I call chastity. Chase living. Control of one's sexual appetite. If that be the case, then you have a person who has good intentions to be in consonance with the church's position. Are we clear? Yes. What is only important is the confessor and you should always connect on how to to accompany this person. Sigurado may lalapit sa inyo eh. Na ganun. Pag ganun, sige, papuntahin nyo sa akin. Sa akin ang umpisal. At tutulungan ko. Kasi hindi lahat ng pare, sorry ah, hindi lahat ng pare na ganun perspective eh. Accompaniment is very important. Number two, 
gradually, putay-putay mong alalayan ang taong ito para ma-apply sa buhay niya ang ideal of the law. O alimbawa, ito nga, dalawang homosexuals o dalawang lesbians. Ito, naranasan ko nung ako nasa Rome. Kasi sa Rome, ay there, there are five Filipinas for one Filipino. So, ibang mga Filipinas doon ay nagsasama. Sabihin ko sa kanila, kayo nagsasama. Opo. Abay, may edad na kayong dalawa. O sabihin nila, o nga eh. Pero nag-meet kami, Father, nung 30 years ago. Kami na. Kami na dalawa. Napagtapos namin ang mga pamangkin namin. Ah, at nakapagpatayo kami ng bahay sa Pilipinas. Eh, kami na lamang dalawa. O, eh, tanong ko, may nangyayari ba? Eh, ala na. Eh, kasi ito nga eh. May lupos na kaya. Wala na. Ano ba nang gawin? Talaga mas kalapitin ko. Ala. Ay, ano ba yun? Tingin niyo sa isa't isa. Ay, Father, kami ho ay talaga matalik na magkaibigan. Oh, may, may masama ba doon? Wala. Because the highest form of relationship is friendship. Sa mag-asawa rin naman eh, ganun eh. Yung mga, mga over 60 na rito, 70. Yung mga babae dito, talaga ano man ang palugin mo, eh talaga wala. Hindi ba? Kahit nilikinitiin mo, eh talaga wala. Ano na lang sa'yo? Tama ba eh? May ang lalaki, nakaw, oh, Diyos ko. Kahit na 80, yan, kalabitin mo lang na babayang mag-ilog na iyan. Yun ang problema sa lalaki. Pero ang lalaki, maaari din magkaroon na rin ng mga health issues. Tama? Oo, oh, ganun na lang. Mag Mamaya ako sharing ka. <laughs> Pero nakikita lang natin ang rhythm of life. Tama? Get to know your naps. In other words, please do not make it burdensome for them to follow Jesus. But number two, do not compromise the moral life na, sige, okay na yan. Di pwede rin yung ganon. Tama? We still follow strict moral rules. Halimbawa, isang case sa LSS, abay, asawa, itinira na rin yun. Yung kape sa bahay. So, pinaproseso ko, masaya ang gagawin ko rito. Sabi ko, sabi ng shepherd, masaya, pabuti mo yung dalawa sa akin. Kasi lalaki kakausapin ko, hindi dalawang babae. Alam mo, mali yung ginawa mo eh. Yung asawa mo, nandun. Yung kapit mo, doon ay nakatira. Hindi pwede. Ba't yung maginawa yun? Ang sagot niya, eh, parang kung maging simple yung buhay ko. <laughs> Ay, kasi tabuhan kita diyan din. Mali iyo, humiwalay ka dito, bigyan mo siya ng magandang buhay. Itong, ano mo, kinakasama mo. Kawawa naman yung asawa mo. Eh, tanggap naman mo. Hindi yun ang isyong tangga. Mali pa rin. Kung gusto mo mag-LSS, sumunod ka sa uh, panuntunan ng simbahan. Humanap ka ng paraan para mawala itong babaeng ito, mabigyan mo siya ng buhay na sarili niya, at siya ay magkaroon ng buhay maliban sa iyo. Bakit? Ang tanggap lang ng simbahan ay monogamous, exclusive, marital relationship. Are we clear? Yes. Monogamous, <coughs> exclusive, marital relationship. Very important. Now, to the tayo, last, prayer. There's no compromise to prayer with the shepherds and the lambs. More prayer, the better. More time with the Lord, the better. Choose the right time. Ask your lambs, what is your prime time? By which you can just light a candle and you pray. Very important yun. I suggest that. Get a candle. No, may mga vigil candles. Light it and pray. You may read a few of scripture, but at the end of the day, you can do the Jesus prayer. Jesus. 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 And you know, it calms you down. Because the name of Jesus means God's salvation. Yeshua. You know how make it? Yeshua. 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 
When you are in temptation, just say, Yeshua. When you are undergoing anxiety, Yeshua. Actually, the devil cannot pronounce the name Yeshua. Nauutal daw. That is why it is also casting out the evil one. Another second is that I would like you to teach your land the prayer to St. Michael every day for St. Michael to protect your lambs and to protect your family. The person who authored that was Pope Leo XIII and he saw a vision of Gabriel at war with Lucifer. Why? They know. Temptation happens in three stages. Number one, suggestion. Number two, pleasure. Number three, consent. Yun ang unang stage, suggestion. The devil is an intelligence higher than you. He knows your weakness. He knows the weakness of your life. And he is like a lion, prowling, finding out where you are at your weakest. Kaya isa sa mga pag-uusapan ninyo, ilabas ng lang ang pinakamahina niyang bahagi sa buhay. Saan siya nanghihina? Where, it, where is his weakest? Alak ba yan? Sigarilyo ba yan? Sex ba yan? Pera ba yan? Why? Go back to the temptation of Jesus. What are the three temptations? Number one, in Matthew, huh? number one, pleasure. Turn the stones into bread. Pleasure. Pleasure. Number two, ilagay siya sa parapet of the temple. Ano yun? Power. Power. Remember, power is influence. If you have a person who is powerful in front of you, huh? power corrupts. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. Alam nyo, sinasabi ko nga, eh, dapat ang ELSS ito mga nasa Congress. <laughs> Tama mali? Tama. <laughs> Bakit? Naaawa ako sa kanila. Hindi yung nagagalit, naaawa ako sapagkat maaari silang ano, malasing sa kapangyarihan. They can get intoxicated with power. Why? Because with power comes wealth. That is the third temptation. Pleasure, power, wealth. Get to know your love. What is his struggle? What is she struggling with? Is she in the corporate world? That with a flick of a finger, people bow at her? What if that power is taken out from her? Will she lose her bearings? Sabi mo sa kanya, kung mawala lahat ito, kung magsaka negosyo, sa kapukulutin, sa kapungan. What does that mean? Three movements, ha? Number two, yung dalawang pangalan ng Diablo. Number one, Diabolos. At number two, Satanas. Tapos nasabi ko ito, may nangyayari, may nagagalit eh. Ano yung Diablo? Diablo means one who divides. One who separates. So in a community, if people get separated because of intrigues, because of demoralization, there is a higher intelligence whispering all of this to the members and telling the members or the family, don't listen to him. Why? Because the refusal to listen is the refusal to accept humility before God. Number two, the second thing, Satanas. That is the second thing. And what does Satanas mean? One who? One who accuses. One who tells lies. And what are lies? Have truths. One who sows in dreams. 
And take note, the daughter of pride is envy or jealousy. And the daughter of pride and envy of envy and jealousy is gossip. Marites. Dagdag natin, marisol. Yung mga kapatid na yung kambal yun eh. Marites at si marisol. Sa community, at arali ninyo, kung mayroon kayong karanasan ng mga couples na nawala na sa BLD, may dahilan. Either nasaktan o may ginawa. Tama? Let us stay away from bad politics. Let us live authentic faith. In BNT. Ama? So, three, ha? So, to prayer. Next. Wala, sa konsin na. Wala. O, yan na. Ano ang community ninyo? Ito na lang, magtatapos. Characteristics of a Christian community. Number one. It is a community that strives to be aware of the life of its members, their fears, hopes, struggles, joys, and dreams. That's the first challenge of shepherding. Be aware of your members, the uniqueness of each member. Do not put everything in one basket. Do not put everyone in one basket. Each one is uniquely given to you by God. As shepherds, you must be aware of the fears, the hopes, the struggles, the joys, and the dreams of the lambs entrusted to you. Kaya nga sinasabi ko, the smaller the lamb, the better. <coughs> Next. It is a reflecting and discerning community. Where is the Lord leading us? In the light of their faith, the members reflect on their situation and search for answers to their questions. They reflect together on the meaning of the situations they are in and try to discover God's call to them through these events or situations. Again, in faith, the members share with one another how they can respond to what God asks of them through these situations. What is discerning? Discerning means sifting through. Where is the Spirit leading me? That should be another conference. Discernment is a way of life. As shepherds, you must be discerning shepherds. Why? Because you might, must never be blind guides to the lambs entrusted to you. Number three, it is a healing and reconciling community. There must be moments in which we ask forgiveness from each other. We must be able to identify the forces that divide or wound the people in the community. They must be able to face the reality of the inner division caused by sin in every person. And therefore, you have opportunities of forgiveness and reconciliation. And you have that as a community. That's part of the LSS, right? Before the baptism. Next, it is an organized community. It is able to harness the gifts and the talents of the individual members and the power inherent in them for the services and activities that promote the common good and that respond to the needs of the members and of the larger community. Organization means what? What are the gifts and talents of each one? So that your gifts and talents will be at the service of the community. This is very important in terms of elders and stewards and shepherds. Right? Now then, last, it is a praying and celebrating community. BLD must Teach people how to pray. And the most important prayer is the Our Father. Sa inyong shepherding, magtapos kayo sa Our Father. Ha? Because it is the pattern of all prayers. It is the prayer of prayers. It is in fact the gospel in miniature. It is the Bible in miniature. But pray slowly. Our Father. 
who art in heaven. Why? Because there are seven petitions in the Our Father. Seven petitions. If it is petitionary in nature, then you see yourself as begging God who is Father. You see yourself as a child of God asking the Father to grant you these graces. Prayer. Okay. Okay. We have health break. Is that all right? We have 10 minutes. Yes. For health break for uh, our personal necessities. And we celebrate. Thank you. from the Holy Gospel of Jesus according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The 72 disciples returned rejoicing and said to Jesus, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. At that very moment, he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father and who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal Him. Turning to the disciples in private, He said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I say to you, many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the memory of the rest of the child Jesus. It is important to emphasize the life of this holy woman, this virgin of the church today for she has contributed so much in the life of the church of our century. She is the only one, the only woman declared as doctor of the church during the whole pontificacy 
of St. John Paul II. She was declared a doctor of the church in the year 2001. What do you mean by doctor of the church? That word doctor comes from the Latin word docere, which means to teach. Thus, she is a teacher of the faith. She has only written one document, and that is, as I mentioned to you, the story of a soul, her own autobiography. Actually, she did not want to write that story of a soul. The superior, who is her blood sister, pressed it on her, forced her to write her autobiography. You see, the rest of the child Jesus came a very came from a very good family, if not a holy family. Her parents are also canonized saints, Louis and Celine Martin. And they are five, actually they are nine all in all, but four of them died at childbirth. Of the five ladies, or the five girls, all of them entered the convent. Of the five ladies, one became a member of the Visitation Sisters, and four of them entered in the same convent of Carmel in Lisieux. The youngest, of course, is Therese, who entered the convent at the age of 16 years old. She wanted to enter Carmel. In fact, she even went to the Pope, joined the pilgrimage during the Jubilee year at that time, and came close to Pope Leo XIII, asking her to be allowed to enter the convent. She was underage. And the response of Leo XIII, if God wills it, then you will enter Carmel. Well, she wanted the explicit permission of the Pope, but she did not get it. Eventually, the bishop gave in to her request, and she entered at the age of 16 years old. And she died at the age of 24 in holy death. And during her years, she was never a superior of the house. She was assistant novice directress. And she did her work in a very ordinary way. Her teaching is simply this. Be like a little child, be childlike, have trust and confidence in God, and God will do the rest. To embrace God as mercy is one of the chief teachings of this little Therese, a daughter of the great Teresa of Avila, the reformer of Carmel. That is why it is important that her name be shared during our Eucharistic celebration this morning as a great example of the importance of family, but indeed the responsibility of parents to raise their children, their family, the ways of holiness is a challenge. The rest was guided by two holy people, Louis and Celie Martin, and indeed she was raised together with her sisters in the ways of the saints. It is said that one of the sisters, Celine, is now undergoing the process of beatification. That is why eventually the program is the whole family will be declared canonized saints. But this is not the first time that a saint has the whole family canonized as saints. One of them is the family of Basil the Great. The whole family is a family of saints. All of us know the relationship between Augustine and Monica. And through the tears and prayers of Monica, Augustine experienced his great conversion, written so well in his confessions. I'd like to share that with you as my first thought. My second thought is the gospel, the readings, and the readings speak about the power of Jesus shared to the disciples, 72 of them. 
they were sent two by two to make him known, to make the kingdom of God known. And he says that indeed, simplicity of life is the call for one who follows Jesus. And what is simplicity but transparent life, a life of total openness to the will of God, to see that we pray hard because everything depends on God and we work hard because everything depends on us. Such is the dynamism of the Christian faith. And indeed, how blessed are we to have been recipients of the great faith given to us by Jesus. Important for you to understand is, is this, that when does eternal life begin? Eternal life begins in baptism so that the people who will be entrusted to you since they are baptized are now considered citizens of heaven as much as you are citizens of heaven. And for you to be shepherds is to guide them into the ways of heaven, into the ways of holiness, into the ways of saints. For that is the simple project of the church, to make saints out of each of us, because only saints go to heaven. And simply, who is a saint? A saint is a friend of God, period. That's how simple I would describe the saint a friend of God. Third and last is for you, as shepherds. I'd like to end my free reflection with the three things that the shepherd uses in his or her shepherding. And this I draw from the wisdom of Psalm 23, the psalm written by David, the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he leads me repose. Through restful waters he leads me, reviving my spirit. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even if I should walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are there with your rod and your staff to comfort me. You spread a table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only goodness, kindness, and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. I love to pray that prayer ever so often since I have been entrusted with shepherding in the church as both parish priest and as professor in the seminaries. But there are three things, three instruments that the shepherd uses found in Psalm 23. And this is my last reflection for you in this month. The first instrument of shepherding is that the shepherd uses the staff. And the staff symbolizes authority. That is why if you look at the bishop, the bishop uses the staff. And the staff is usually held by the bishop when the gospel is proclaimed, what does that mean? That he can only govern in terms of how the word of God governs him. And that is my challenge for you. The staff is entrusted to you because you have been chosen by Jesus to be shepherd of people who will be entrusted to you. And trust means that you must be good stewards, never owners. Thus, you move from proprietorship to stewardship. You are stewards because you are grateful for having been chosen. <clears throat> By your own effort, you cannot say, I am worthy to be a shepherd. No, you have been asked to be a shepherd. And that is why every day of your life, you will have to say to Jesus how unworthy I am to be shepherd, to be given this gift of authority over four or five people who will be entrusted to me. That is why as stewards, be mindful that it is Jesus who will guide you in terms of shepherding the staff. Guidance is very important. And as I mentioned to you, it becomes a lifelong vocation for you. Yes. It is a vocation. 
it is a commitment, it is lifelong. And thus, as shepherds, it is very important that when these four or five people are entrusted to you, you should daily pray for each of them. Mention their name before Jesus in silence and in solitude. Offer your masses on their behalf. Be the means by which Jesus will show his favorable face to them. The staff. It speaks of your authority. The second is the rod. The rod simply shows discipline. Without discipline, there cannot be any learning. We know that. Without discipline at home, then the house or the home can be unruly without focus. And thus, there is division in the home. You have the rod with you because at times you will have to identify the faults of this lamb and trust it to you. And you should not placate him for the sake of pleasing him. No. You should always please the Lord. And at times you will have to pull one lamb just by himself or herself just to present to him or her. Is this you? But please take note, your sins do not define you. Your past does not define you. You are more than your past. You are more than your sins. It may affect you now, but that is not the kind of person that God wants you to be. Discipline at times for us can be painful, but it must be done. Discipline among the members of the community must be done. And it can be painful at times, but it is part of loving. Because without discipline, love becomes simply sentimentalism. And it is a compromise of the rules of the community. Discipline. And when discipline happens, yes, we should be able to wake him up out of his idleness and find him again as back in the community. That is why it is said by Matthew, if a person sins, tell his words to him. If he does not listen, get a witness. If he does not listen to the witness, bring him to the community. But if he does not listen to the community, excommunicate him for him to go back to his senses, for him to return to the community. At the end of the discipline, all discipline, at first instance can be painful, but in the end, it will be fruitful. The lambs entrusted to you are people who do not have the discipline of prayer, the discipline of community, the discipline of marriage, the discipline of filial love as children of their parents. That is why in disciplining, there must be challenge and growth. Why? Because when a person is in crisis, he has two choices. What are the two choices? Number one, he either becomes creative or he becomes chaotic. But at the end of the day, it is his decision, not yours. And at times, you may have to create space between the two of you because at times, the shepherd can be controlling of the lamb. Do not control your lambs. That is wrong. Treat your lambs in the spirit of maturity. And yes, part of the rod is simply at times to have a one-on-one -on -one with this lamb because he or she needs it the most, more than the rest. And those who need it more are people who need your attention and your love. The third and the last instrument of the shepherd found in Psalm 23 is the oil of gladness. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The oil. Take note, in the LSS, oil will be the soothing balm of healing. That is the power of the LSS. LSS 
is simply the strengthening of the consecration of this person in his or her baptism. So that the Spirit may continue to grow in him or her through the gifts and through the fruits entrusted to that person. That is why there are two instruments there. The instrument of oil is the instrument of forgiveness and the instrument of reconciliation. Use the sacrament of confession as means to draw out the person to a closer relationship with Jesus. And take note, <coughs> there will be forces that will inhibit you from engaging in good shepherding. You will be tested. And at times, you will be demoralized. At times, the lamb will simply tell you, I am not ready. But you will have to endure those words and say, no, this is the time of Kairos. This is God's time for you. Do not postpone this. The oil symbolizes healing and strength. The oil symbolizes anointing and mission. The oil symbolizes your life in the community. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, three instruments of shepherding. First instrument is the staff. Second is the rod. And third is the oil. Use these instruments well for you. For you have been vested with authority over your brothers and sisters. And may we who are weak of spirit be truly worthy of the vocation of the shepherd. Amen.